I've been waiting for you. You've made it to this video. Welcome. Today I got a special little video. So if you've watched my channel at all, you'll know this is mainly a lifting channel, right? I've mainly done a lot of content on lifting just because it's something easy to talk about. The community is pretty cool. It's chill. It's a chill subject. I enjoy it, right? But actually, I've had experience when it comes to uh, certain combat sports. Now, by no means am I a professional. I'm just saying that Overall, I've actually had a little bit of experience when it comes to combat sports, right? Specifically kickboxing, K1, Muay Thai, stuff like that. So in this video today, we're going to be talking about reducing brain damage. Now, personally, I have never been knocked out. I have never been concussed to my knowledge. I'm sure I've had some slight, you know, like injuries to the head, I guess. Like getting punched in the head is never good. Just look at some of the best chins in the sport, right? Yoel Romero, stuff like... People have been punched hard in the face, right, when they're not drunk, and they're able to eat shots, and everyone's like, holy crap, how'd that not knock them out? Now, I must say that knockouts can't always be prevented because these people do eat crazy shots, but in order to actually survive a shot, you kind of have to see it coming to a degree. You know, if you don't see, like for instance, there used to be this thing where people would run up behind, uh, you know, nine to five workers going home from work, and they just punch them in the back of the head, right? super polite thing to do to people who just want to go home and you know it's just beautiful i love society man but they would go up and punch these people in the back of the head and everyone was like holy shit like do are these kids super powerful like do they have like magical powers did they channel the demons and while that can be argued that they're you know there is d demonic presence within them in reality when you're relaxed when you're chilling when you're just going home you're not trying to you're not fighting anyone right and then someone comes up you and hits you in the back of the head where your cerebellum is brain damage is going to happen so all of this to say that brain damage can't always be avoided and i'm not a doctor so i'm not a doctor so remember that today i'm going to bring to you guys three methods on uh, which i believe helps train your body in order to absorb force better just overall survive fights better and just less brain damage and say it with me less brain damage is good more brain damage is bad okay so without further ado if you compete in a combat sport this video is for you no you will not see this video on the news although it should be promoted but cut that out cut that out of the video cut that out let's talk about how a knockout works okay so for those of you who don't know, your brain is actually suspended sort of in a, in a way in this fluid known as meningi fluid. It's just a thin layer of fluid that surrounds um, your brain. And you get smacked in the face, like just clocked super hard and your jaw goes like wah. Basically your brain, your head goes like this, right? And your brain is still staying in place. So now your head runs into your brain and then your brain starts to move and your brain starts rattling like this in your head, right? It starts smacking against the sides of your skull and say it with me, that is is bad i'll say it again say it with me that is not ideal and when that happens it stimulates a bunch of neurons in your brain to basically say oh my god what just happened we just got smashed in the head with a sledgehammer we need to shut down now or we're gonna die so it stimulates a bunch of neurotransmitters all your electrolytes in your body get thrown off everything goes crazy in order for the body to achieve homeostasis again you go to sleep and you enter a temporary state of paralysis in order to stop getting brain damage i don't know the evolutionary reason for this personally i would have picked something better but i i don't make the rules okay i didn't just present you the news okay so that's how kale works basically your brain gets rattled like this a bunch of neurotransmitters go wah and then you go to sleep okay and you take a little nap and honestly the nap it might be peaceful again i've never been knocked out and i think that's in in part due to my lifting but i have yet to be knocked out knock on wood i don't want to get knocked out no one wants to get knocked out um, I've had some good times, some bad times, some ugly times, some great times. But without further ado, let's actually get into the real training method. I would say the times where I had the worst headaches after fighting was when I was a skinny ninth grader and I would spar my friends in my basement. We didn't really spar, we would just beat the shit out of each other. It was really stupid looking back, but it taught me a lesson, dude, that yes, muscles don't win fights, skills win fights, but muscles help you use those skills because they make you more powerful, they make you more strong, but they also protect you and they also kind of act as a shield against oncoming force. So full body force absorption. Okay. When you think about getting taken down, getting tackled, whatever it may be, you can always get whiplash from simply just being hit in the body, right? If you get trucked in the body hard enough and you get knocked down, it could still cause your head to whip back. So 
In reality, the first step of preventing these kinds of things from happening is just simply strengthening the whole body, getting the whole body ready for contact. Now, methods of doing this, I recommend mainly compound movements. You don't have to do them super frequently. I would say if you're off season, three to four times a week is fine. And if you're in season or preparing for something, your strength work should be maybe one to two days a week. And you're mainly focused on conditioning when preparing for a competition, at least in fighting. But I still think there is a degree in which you should train your strength, you should train your mobility. But really, you want to develop those things before. You don't want to try to peak at the squat for a fight. That wouldn't make sense. You just want to get really strong at squatting and moving in general and then take a fight. So full body force absorption, what does that mean? First thing it means is just get strong. Again, do those compound movements, primarily heavy deadlifts, uh, stuff like this is going to really strengthen the muscles actually in the back of the neck, the, the traps that run down your back and stuff like that. And getting all of that, those things strong is going to be really good and just getting, getting good at bracing, getting good at you know, when you see someone coming, knowing how to absorb that force. And speaking of absorbing force, along with full body force absorption, not only should you be doing like your generic moves, I truly believe, I made a video on this, Olympic weightlifting. I recently went through a large phase where I was doing a lot of weightlifting and I really learned these movements a lot better than I previously had known them. And while I do think they have their, they are very hard to learn technically, I still think it's a great investment for most athletes because most athletes, they can take the time to learn the Olympic lifts unless you're a professional who's in the heat of their career. But if you're someone like me who's still young and has a lot of time on their hands compared to, you know, professional athletes, you can actually dedicate some time to learning these lifts. And the reason why I like them is when people think of the Olympic lifts, I'm going to be just talking about the clean. The snatch is great too, but in reality, as an athlete, you don't necessarily need to learn the snatch. People usually think of the Olympicus, they think, oh, it, it helps you get strong, helps you develop power, right? It helps you develop explosiveness, which is the same thing as power, right? But in reality, what it actually does is it helps you get ready to absorb force. Why? Because you're literally throwing, think about the clean or the snatch. You're throwing weight up in the air, getting under it, and then catching it. I'm willing to bet that the clean is probably one of the best things for that. Because you have another implement, it's not like a depth jump where yes, you're absorbing force on your body, but it's your own body weight. You have another implement in the clean, which is the barbell and the weights, and you're actually catching that, which is going to make you need to learn how to relax to get under the weight and then brace really hard to absorb the weight and then squat it up, obviously. So yeah, that's my first method that I would say, just full body force absorption. Again, get nice and strong, get athletic, get know how to move your body through space, do calisthenics, do sprints, do jumps, do lifts. Don't subscribe to one thing, bodybuilding, powerlifting, weightlifting. Take th things from, as an athlete, we want to take things from all of these practices and we want to make our own concoction which is your program and you want to be able to cater it towards your goals which in this case is fighting and specifically in this video what we're talking about is preventing head injury the second method is going to be directly strengthening the muscles of the neck directly strengthening the muscles of the neck is going to be done in two ways you got to think about the way the neck moves okay so the neck has cervical side bending cervical extension cervical flexion and then you have cervical rotation now rotation is kind of hard to prevent because in reality getting hit in the jaw this structure is really animatonically weak right when you when your jaw these muscles it's kind of like a hinge here there's not much muscle in your jaw so when someone punches it it's pretty much on the bone which causes that jaw to kind of uh, right and then the head snaps and falls with it so for as for things like cervical extension right imagine an uppercut coming here popping your neck and it wants to bend back right so strengthening the all of these muscles around the neck is going to help prevent these things now I have two ways of doing it. I have isometric neck strength, which think about that as keeping the head in place. And then there's dynamic neck strength, which think about those of you who wrestled know exactly what I'm talking about. They always tell you to use your head to fight for position. Now, what controls your head? Your neck. Your neck is the thing controlling your head when you're fighting for position in these uh, scenarios, okay? So we want to strengthen the neck in both ways. For isometric neck strength, I like to shill out the, I, the neck bridges. Now, neck training is also something that should be taken very gently at first. So I don't want you guys to see me doing a neck bridge with the hand support and think you can necessarily do it the same way because in reality, if you do this wrong, you're just gonna put a bunch of pressure on your cervical spine, which is just a slew of bad problems that you don't want 
So in reality, really try to regress these things if you've never trained your neck. So you can do neck bridges on a wall. You can do neck bridges supporting with hand support and, you know, be very cautious of how much force you're applying on your hands. Or you could simply grab your hand and just push your head, right? And try to keep it still, right? You can literally just control it yourself. I recommend definitely regressing it if you've never trained your neck before. Now, as for dynamic um, neck exercises, I like, there's a lot of things you could do. You could do neck curls, right? Just putting some plates or some weight or another partner on the side of your head and they're kind of pushing your head. Again, you have to have really good communication and understand, you know, you don't want to be jerking someone's neck down because obviously that's not good. But doing neck curls with plates and stuff like that, weights, it's going to help you be able to move your neck, right? One of my favorites also, which kind of hits everything, it, you're moving your neck, but it's also you have to keep your head in place, is just putting a band around your neck, uh, around your forehead, tying it to something, and then just turning your head from side to side. This is going to pretty much hit it in an isometric method as well as a dynamic uh, way too. The thing is, I don't really like this one because it's hard to load. Um, that's why they, they sell that thing, the iron neck, but no one wants to spend $400 to prevent brain damage, dude. Well, actually, maybe you kind of do, but not, not all of us have $400. So, this is the next best thing, okay? I really do think strengthening the muscles of the neck are ex is extremely important. Now, the third method is going to be actually hypertrophy and strength of the muscles around the neck, mainly the traps and the upper back. Now, when you think about how muscles are, it's a, it's a pretty, like, like well-known rule that the bigger a muscle is in mass, the stronger it is. Like overall, I'm not even talking about a developed muscle. What are the biggest muscles in the human bodies? Well, we have the, the glutes, we have the hamstrings, we have the quads. All of these muscles can be developed to be the strongest muscles in the body. Your glutes are a lot stronger than your forearms or your bicep, right? Because the glutes are huge compared to these smaller muscles. So in reality, the muscles of the neck, yes, they can be developed. And yes, I definitely recommend training them. But in reality, you don't want to only train your neck and then walk away because the muscles of the neck really aren't that big. They really aren't that strong compared to the muscles like the traps, the upper back. Think about how much you can shrug. Think about how much you can power shrug. Now think about how much you can side bend with your neck. Obviously your power shrug, your shrug is gonna be a lot stronger. So along with the full body force absorption, the heavy deadlifts, the fast pulls, um, just overall getting the body strong and along with the direct neck strengthening, the neck bridges, the neck curls, the um, banded turning your head or whatever it's called. You wanna also hypertrophy the muscles around the neck, primarily the traps and the upper back. Now, I do this through methods like shrugs. I train my back a lot. I train my full body a lot. But in reality, you wanna get these muscles bigger and you wanna get them stronger. Now, you don't wanna get them too big. You don't wanna get them so big that you're taking away from your actual goal. But I'm saying you wanna develop them because in reality, the more mass you have around that area and the more developed it is, the more force it's gonna be able to absorb and disperse. And that's going to overall make you just a lot better for uh, contact. So to conclude this beautiful video, we talked about the reasons why you should train your neck. We talked about how the kale works. We talked about the goal of the video. We talked about how brain damage can't always 100% be stopped because sometimes you just fucking get hit, right? We talked about three methods. We talked about full body force absorption, primarily, you know, just getting the body strong. But I also mentioned that I really like the Olympic lifts, specifically the clean for this type of thing. Uh, we talked about directly strengthening the muscles of the neck. Okay, we talked about doing that through two ways. We talked about isometric strength and then dynamic neck strength. When we talked about growing the muscles around the neck and really of the whole body, you don't want to become a bodybuilder is not what I'm saying because a lot of people I think will misinterpret what I'm saying. I'm saying if you're very skinny and you have no muscle mass, you want to put some on. Take it from someone that actually was very skinny. So yeah, without with all that being said, guys, I hope this video helped you out. Leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below what you thought about training your neck. Uh, and, you know, try this shit out. Let me know how it works. But that's pretty much all I got for you guys. Thanks for watching again. Have a good day.